Hello and welcome to the Ameren Museum. My name is Eric Caldwell. I'm the Chief Executive here at our Ameren Foundation. And for the last dozen years, I've been the Chief Curator of our museum. We'd like to bring the Ameren to you. So today we're going to explore an American art form, a century of Zuni and Navajo jewelry. So this extraordinary collection of jewelry was amassed by one family, the Vanderwagen family. The Vanderwagens were missionaries to the Pueblo of Zuni in the late 19th century. Ultimately, they opened a store and trading post operation, and over the course of three generations, their family set aside some of the most beautiful pieces of Zuni and Navajo jewelry to one day create a museum collection. A little over six years ago, the family decided to donate that collection here to the Ameren Foundation. There's some 10,000 pieces of jewelry spanning 100 years of history, backed up by 100 years of business records that tell us who are the artists, what materials they made, and what their lives were like at the time that these wonderful works of art were created. So to the Vanderwagen family who created this collection and assembled it, it really isn't about the aesthetic beauty, it's about the stories. They have a mission for this collection, and the mission for this collection is for us to remember all of the artists and the stories of their lives by preserving this collection and sharing it with others. One example of that is Mr. Minko Dooley. Over my shoulder, you're going to see a beautiful pencil sketch. That's a sketch of a very early jeweler in the Zuni community, Mr. Dooley. Uh, Mr. Dooley created this piece that you see here. He did all the stonework that you see. And the silver work was done by a friend and a Navajo silversmith named Charlie Wilson. Now, Mr. Dooley has been lost to the mists of history. He trained a whole bunch of people. He educated a whole bunch of people. There were whole generations of jewelers who learned at his bench. However, as time went on, his name started to be forgotten. And some of the pieces that he created, later generations would attribute to other artists. Now, he was a dear friend of the Vanderwagens. This pencil sketch was done by a Vanderwagen family member. And it's the only image that we have of Mr. Dooley. The goal of the collection is to put a face to the artists who made these things, and then to share those faces with all of you who come to see this exhibit. One of the stories that you'll learn about when you visit this exhibit is that any one piece is actually usually the work of many different hands. Most of these pieces were created in a collaborative project with different members of the family, friends from different families and households, this piece is one of my very, very favorites. It was created by a husband and wife team, Virgil and Shirley Ben. They almost look like paintings when you look at them in close detail, but all of this is shell and stone, precisely and finely placed together to depict this dancer, to depict scenes from the natural world around their home. One of the things we learn is that this great artwork takes a community. One of the great strengths of the collection is that over a century of time, dozens and dozens and dozens of artists are represented. They run a range from some forms that are very uh, simple and clean uh, to pieces that are incredibly elaborate and detailed. This is one of those elaborate detailed pieces. This is the work of three different artists. The silver work here was done by a man from the Pueblo of Zuni named Tom Wiaki. And the stone work was done by husband and wife team Bruce and Dorothy Zuni. It's a bookend, and it has a matching mate. Uh, it features uh, Bisbee turquoise and a variety of turquoises from other mine sources and shelf forms from around the world as well as jet. And it has these intricate silver carvings that the silversmith, Mr. Wiaki, put along the bottom to elaborate the form. It is truly a creative masterpiece by one of the most singular silversmiths of the 20th century.